Welcome to the Portland Culinary Podcast on Portland Culinary Radio. I'm really excited about today's episode. Joining me is my special guest, Tina Mays Shea. She is the founder of Slossy Minks Barbecue and Rubs. How are you doing? Good afternoon, Tina. I'm doing awesome. How are you? Very. And I'm, 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 I'm happier than a pig in mud. I've got a... Um, <laughs> got an amazing beer in front of me, a Sun River Pale Ale. I'm here at the Pod Bar, a food cart pod. We're recording a podcast at the Pod Bar. That's kind of fun. I'm looking at two amazing barbecue sliders. You pulled pork barbecue sliders you made for me with your roasted garlic sweet molasses sauce and some chips that you gussied up. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't get better than this, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, so your company's name is Saucy Minx Barbecue Sauces and Rubs. Yes. So when did you start the company? 2011. Okay, and standard questions from my podcast. Uh, where were you born? Southeast Portland. And where at? Woodland Park Hospital. Woodland Park Hospital, okay. And where'd you go to high school? Marshall High School. Marshall High School. John Marshall High School? Yes. John Marshall High School. And what's the mascot there? The Minutemen. The Minutemen. And if I remember correctly, my limited Southeast Portland geography, uh, that hospital and the high school are both gone. But yep. you still say you had nothing to do with that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I deny everything. <laughs> All right. Okay. So where did your, um, so you make amazing barbecue sauces now. You've got um, five in your flagship line. You've got this really cool kind of different sauce we'll talk about. You've got two specialty sauces that might eventually become in the flagship line. You've got what, six rubs. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll get into all of that. But where did your, where did your sauce journey begin? I was 11. (laughs) Okay. No, I got to hear this story. (laughs) So I grew up in a fairly low income home. Okay. And um, I always was the last one to the steak sauce. And so I was actually trying to recreate steak sauce. Because sometimes when there's dinner, they would run out before it got to you. Yep. Okay. So you would uh, do some compounding or some experimenting in the kitchen trying to recreate your favorite steak sauce. I would. <laughs> I love it. What was your favorite steak sauce as a kid when you were 11? A1. A1. That was my dad's steak sauce when I was a kid. He loved A1. He thought it was awesome. And it was we could we could get into it. That was his sauce. We couldn't touch it. Now, uh, my mom used to get so mad at me. She'd yell at me to stop playing with my food. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because you're creating stuff. Yes. Yeah. You're not at the table, but you're in the kitchen trying to, like, you know, well, play science. Both at the table and in the kitchen. I was playing mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. And, um... All right, and uh, so barbecue, did you guys have a barbecue when you were growing up? I, we had one in the backyard. Backyard, okay, and then it was used? Yeah, it, a lot. I, you know, we're, we're in the Northwest. We grill year-round. <laughs> I love it. And uh, ever go camping? Absolutely. So what kind of places you guys go camping at? Mount Hood National Forest or Beverly Beach down by Lincoln City. Beverly Beach, Lincoln City. So you're on the Oregon coast. Mm-hmm. Right there's the ocean. You're camping. Was there an open fire? Yeah. And then you'd throw meat on it. Yep. And that was when you were a kid and you were in seventh heaven. Yep. (laughs) I love it. Okay. So then uh, what happens after high school? Then what do you do? I go to work for U.S. Bank. (laughs) Okay. Not what I expected. (laughs) I'm thinking barbecue journey, U.S. Bank. Okay. So you go to U.S. Bank. Okay. And then um, what happened in 2001? I went to culinary school. Why the heck did you go to culinary school? Because after I left U.S. Bank, I eventually wound up as an EMT where I met my husband. And uh, I got tired of getting beat up by my patients. (laughs) So I decided to go to culinary school to become a pastry chef. A pastry chef. A pastry <laughs> chef. Why in the world would you want to, what did, what, why, was there something you liked about pastry? I loved baking cakes and decorating cakes and baking cookies. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cause the making, you know, I'm not a baker, but to me, when I watch, you know, I watch those shows, the decorating seems to be as much work as the baking. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, uh, so tell me about that fateful day at culinary school that shifted everything. Oh, our first day after, our first six weeks is spent in sanitation. And Here's th- how you wash dishes. Yeah. <laughs> Here's how you sanitize your kitchen. And then the very first day in the kitchen coincidentally happened to have been 9-11. So 9-1-2001. Yes. I mean, 9-11-2001. Yes. And um, that day we learned how to saute. And the minute that I got to throw alcohol in a pan with oil and garlic and onions and everything else and flames whooshed up, I fell in love. (laughs) And is that the day that you discovered you wanted to be a saucier? It is. (laughs) Okay, for those that don't know, what is a saucier? Uh, it's French for basically the sauce maker. The sauce maker. Ooh, saucier. It sounds so ooh, alluring and amazing. And it's saucy. <laughs> and it's saucy. That's right. Okay. So all of a sudden, now you're shifted. Is that when you, I'm not, did you then graduate and go off to become a baker? 
No, actually. Um, I, gr I actually did my externship in a bake shop. Okay. Graduated, and my first job was in a barbecue place. Oh, I love that. Okay, by the way, we didn't ask. Um, what culinary school did you go to? Western Culinary. Oh, I love those guys. Uh, they started at Oregon Culinary Institute. The guys who were running Western Culinary started Oregon Culinary Institute. Fantastic culinary school. Love OCI. Okay, so your first job was at a barbecue sh place making barbecues. Yep. A barbecue restaurant. Barbecue restaurant. Wow. Okay. And did you then make sauce? I made their sauce, with, which... With, it, with their recipe. With their recipe. Uh -huh. It was okay, but I knew I could make better, so I did. Okay. So then uh, did you then go home and just start making barbecue sauce? In a way. <laughs> I started making it for friends and family as presents and stuff like that. Okay. So you went home and you just right then, you're like, okay, I'm making barbecue sauce. Yeah. And did people love it? They did. Did you ever hear anybody tell you, you know, you should start a company selling barbecue sauce? I heard it from my brothers all the time. <laughs> all the time. All right. So uh, what pushed you over the edge to decide, I'm going to start a, uh, my own company? A friend of his wanted to buy some. Who was that? Jason. So Jason wanted to, said, you make it, make me some barbecue sauce, and I'll buy it. Yep. Did you make it for him? I did. Did you sell it to him? I did. He paid for it? He did. You got a business, baby. <laughs> <laughs> How did that feel? Someone bought your, bought your barbecue sauce. It's, it felt pretty darn good. Okay, and that's okay. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start my own company. That's, yep. All right. Uh, fantastic. And that was, what if I remember, 2011 that 2011. happened. 2011. And right then is when you launched a company. I'm going yep. for it. This is it. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. That's fantastic. I love it. Okay. So uh, when you first start out, 2011, how are you making sales happen? What are you doing for sales? -wise? Word of mouth. Word of mouth. So you sell to friends, friends of friends, mm -hmm. family, family members, family members, friends. Yep. Okay. And then uh, you switched that model up in 2014. What did you shift to in 14 or add? I actually did my very first event um, because I don't live in Portland anymore. I live in Silverton. We have the hometown festival called Homer Davenport Days. Homer Davenport days. Yes. And so you went and sold um, barbecue sauce there. Yes. And how did it go? It went good. I sold quite a bit of sauce. I was really impressed and I was just, I absolutely loved it. Uh, okay. And then, so then you did what, uh, 14, 15, two years of events, mm -hmm. events all over all kinds of events. What were mm -hmm. some of the other events you did during, um, that, during that time? I would do, I, let's see, I did an event in Oregon City, um, a spring spring fest or something like may fest or something like that i did uh, a couple of independent fairs and stuff like that nice okay and then um 2016 you you added yet another item and what did you start selling then in 2016 checks barbecue store in kaiser so you started selling in stores yes nice and is that the year that you got into an iconic uh portland company it is and tell us, where is your sauce still sold to this day? Otto's Sausage Kitchen. That is a big deal to be it in is. Otto's. I mean, that is a big deal because they don't screw around. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 2016, you go into a couple different stores, including Otto's. But then what happens in 2017? I get into my local grocery chain, Roth's IGA. Okay, and how many stores do they have? Ten. Ten. Okay, so you, you put your sauces in just one of their stores? No, all of them. All ten. All ten. And how what did that what, did that blow your mind? It did. <laughs> I was extremely happy. I sat down with with the with their buyer, um, who used to run the local store, and he tasted my sauces and wanted to know what my top sellers were. So I told him, and that's what they carry. That's fantastic. I love it. Okay, and then uh, so that was uh, 2017. So just mm -hmm. last year. Yes. It's spring of 18. Something happened amazing just the beginning of this year. What's that? Market of choice. So that's a grocery chain. How many yeah. stores do they have? Eleven. Eleven. And uh, are you in one or two of their stores? Oh, no, I'm in all eleven. You're in all eleven. So you're like in like more than 20 different grocery stores and mm -hmm. stores across the Northwest. Yes. Counting, you know, up all the little. That is, how did it feel when Market of Choice, uh, when they placed their first order? I cried. I bet you did. Because it's like, it's, it's starting to happen now. I uh, cried buckets. <laughs> So, uh, you know, my friend Chris Fontenot, he does uh, Cajun Life Seasoning. When mm -hmm. I first met him, he had a, a little food cart pod, a uh, little food cart out in Damascus. And he told me someday he's going to have his um, seasonings all across the country nationwide. 
and now he does. When I first met you, you had some jars and some barbecue sauce and a business, and you're going to make it happen. And now you're across the Northwest, and I predict someday you're going to have your barbecue sauces nationwide. I'm working on it. It's <laughs> going to happen. You're working very hard and very, very well. I love it. All right. I love that story. I love how you put it together. But now we got to talk about the barbecue sauces. Okay. So I mentioned um, you have five barbecue sauces, and then you have this, uh, this different kind of sauce. Um, let's see. Which one is the different one? Yes, this one right here. What the heck is attitude dipping sauce? It's ketchup with attitude because it's what ketchup really wants to be. <laughs> okay, now tell me, talk me through it. I'll taste it. You talk me so through it. So this is the one I started making when I was 11. It is a ketchup base, and I just started adding stuff to it to, get, to kick up the flavor. Um, I tell people it's adult ketchup because it's got chunks of garlic, it's got chunks of onion, and it's got a whole lot of flavor. Man, this is amazing. I would love this like on a hamburger. I, I make burgers with it. I, I call them attitude burgers. I put it right in the mix and grill them up. And then I will actually take a, that little taster jar to the pub when I go to McMinimins or any of the other pubs, and I'll dip my fries and tots in it. So you smuggle in your own ketchup. I do. <laughs> okay, this is amazing. I'm glad you called it attitude dipping sauce because it's like, you know, a spicy ketchup, but not too spicy. Right. Uh, this would not sell well in Minnesota there. They think ketchup's already a spice. Right. But you could sell it in all the other states yep. other than Minnesota. They just couldn't handle it there. But uh, I lived in Minnesota for three years. Those poor people. But this is fantastic. This is really good. Okay, so we got got dipping sauce. You have five flagship sauces that are in stores, you know, mm -hmm. all across the Northwest. Then you've got two specialty sauces. So you've got, what, is a smoked jalapeno aguave. Is that right? Uh, yep, aguave. So aguave. So tell me about that one. That one is green, and it starts with jalapenos that I slow smoke. And yes, my cheeks do get tired. <laughs> um, and then she I rolls those jalapenos up in little paper and smokes them. <laughs> <laughs> Man, my lungs hurt after a while, but you know it's so worth it. Uh, so I slow smoke them, and then I grind them up, seeds and all, and then I combine it with some tequila, with some agave. No refined sugars in this one. It's got some tomatillo in it. So what's and agave? Agave is what basically is is tequila before it becomes tequila. And some people use it as a sweetener. Right. It yeah. is a... It, it kind of looks like honey, kind of. It, yeah. It's a little, you know, it's got a consistency kind of like a thin corn syrup. Yep. But it's a whole lot sweeter. And so you don't have to use as much. Okay. And then uh, you've got a smoked peach mango barbecue sauce. I do. That one's coming out very soon because I've switched it up and I'm making the batch with uh, a spiced habanero rum from Four Spirits Distillery out of Corvallis because I, I love their miss mission. Yeah, I love it. Fantastic. They do a great job. And they're using their, you're using their spiced habanero rum. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. And this will have actual pieces of smoked jalapeno in it instead. I love it. Now, uh, I was just recently at Kaloa Rum in Kauai, Hawaii, mm -hmm. and I had their coffee rum, which blew my mind. And I told them on the podcast that I recorded there, I took, took the Pol Portland Culinary Podcast on the road, and I told them about you on the podcast, and I want a a coffee barbecue sauce made with their coffee rum. That would be phenomenal. Not a problem. <laughs> I just think that would be amazing. Okay, so those two aren't available stores all over yet, but those are coming. Right. We'll talk about the five spices in a second, but you've got six rubs. Yes. So I know that if you're a barbecue nerd, you know all about rubs. Yeah. But the average person, they may or may not know about rubs. So what do you, if you buy a rub, what the heck do you do with it? <laughs> you rub it on your meat. <laughs> <laughs> or your vegetables, or whatever floats your boat. Oh my gosh! Okay, I think we should make a we should make a video sometime. Uh, you could teach people how to rub their meat, so that would be fun. <laughs> oh my gosh! Get we went there. Okay, so um, okay, so um, I've actually uh, you know um, my girlfriend loves your stuff, and so she has the uh, pump and poultry. Mm -hmm. A number of your rubs, she buys it, she orders it, she loves it. Um, so the pump and poultry, just put that on chicken, throw it in the oven. Absolutely, and I usually tell people. Because chicken skin is so thick, nothing goes through it. Peel the skin back. Put it on underneath the skin and then pull the skin back and put a little bit more over top of the skin. I love it. Okay. And then how hot is this flame and fury? Uh, it's pretty darn hot. I have set fire to uh, the bat cave a few times when I was bottling. <laughs> Okay, and then I always tell men to wear to wear gloves when handling, otherwise they're gonna set fire to their fire hose. <laughs> Or their bat pole, <laughs> however they want to term it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I get it now. Now I understand. Yeah, you get the stuff on your hands, and you put your hands in a place, and you're suffering. Okay, so these chips, these were plain potato chips when yes. they entered your they world. they were unsalted. And you, what did you put on these potato chips? My rock and red rub. So you put 
barbecue sauce rub on the potato chips. Mm-hmm. And they're a bit spicy. I, I cannot handle uh, too much spice, but they are good and it works. Where did you get that idea? Um, from doing demos. I basically needed something that was gluten-free to, for, to let people try the rubs. And so I started sprinkling um, them on the potato chips. And I was actually at the um, Canby Food and Wine Fest, did, had a booth a couple years ago when I started doing that. That's fantastic. Okay, so now we're going to talk about your five flagship, current five flagship barbecue sauces. Let's start with the tangy mustard. So uh, mustard-based barbecue sauce is a thing. It's what? No. North Carolina, right? Um, actually, mustard is South Carolina. That's what I meant. Yeah, okay, South Carolina. Excuse me. Yeah, but mustard-based uh, barbecue sauce is a thing. Yes, it is. So now, barbecue nerds are not the average person may or may not. So tell me about your uh, tangy mustard. My tangy mustard has three different types of mustard in it that um, just blends and, and melds well. At, it is. I designed it for chicken strips, but it's just as good on pork and beef and uh, yep. brats and pretzels and anything else. So I like mustard. You know, I put mustard on brats and those kind of things. I haven't never thought, oh, I really want a mustard barbecue sauce, but this is really good. Thank you. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. So tangy mustard. Okay. It's, so It's my favorite, and it's the most award-winning sauce. Oh, you've won a few awards, have you? I have won oh, awards. Well, tell us about these awards. Well, that one actually has placed first. It has placed second, and it has tied for third. It Last year, it tied for third at American Royal Barbecue. Nice. What other kind of awards have you picked up along the way? Um, I got first place for my Flame and Fury Rub this year at the National Barbecue Association. I got uh, third place People's Choice for my Honey Habanero. My Marion Berry has won first place. My Smoked Jalapeno Agave has won third place. Um, and my Attitude Dipping Sauce took third at the Soscars. What the heck is the Soscars? The Soscars is a barbecue sauce contest out, uh, from back east that is the Oscars of barbecue sauce. I love it. Okay, so you've won a lot of awards. And the, the cool thing about that is that barbecue nerds, barbecue geeks, they know barbecue sauce. And they're the ones that are judging those. So that actually is mm-hmm. big-time credibility. Yes. That's fantastic. Okay. So I was, uh, my girlfriend made me swear when I told her last night that I would be interviewing you, that I had to, you know, take her, uh, when I see her this weekend, a bottle of honey habanero. <laughs> she buys yours. it. She uses it. She thinks it's fantastic. She likes to sweat when she eats. I'm a wimp. I can't do it. But she will put this stuff. She loves the spice and the heat. And, you know, a lot of times when people get something spicy, it's not really that spicy. Mm-hmm. This stuff is stinking hot. Right. So you take that Flame and Fury rub with you. Yeah. And she can make uh, Flame and Fury drunken shrimp or drunken chicken with it. Wow. Yeah, this honey habanero, and, and I just took a, I just took a little bit on my fork, mm-hmm. and it's it seems safe and nice, and then it just the it heat blooms. Yes, yeah. the, the heat sneaks up on you. I make hot wings with that. Oh, that would kill me. And there's a restaurant in Gresham that actually serves that with my Marion Berry on hot wings. Oh my gosh. Okay, so um, are there real habaneros in this? Yes. Okay, so what's it like? How do you cook the habaneros? How do you do this? I take fresh habaneros, and I put them in my smoker. And I smoke them, and I grind them up, seeds and all. Okay, and do you, like, have to wear gloves when you're handling them? For the most, yeah, if I don't want to set fire to certain things. Because, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 and have you ever, like, driven yourself out of your own house because of the... I have. <laughs> I have, and it is not fun. I actually chased my entire family out of the house. Because there's something, habaneros are the real deal. I mean, yes. those are hot, hot, hot. They are. Yeah, I mean, they're not like a scorpion pepper or anything, or a ghost right. pepper, but they're... And honestly, I'm not, I don't, I won't go hotter than a habanero because I think that you're killing taste buds after that. Okay. And I go for taste. I go for flavor. I go for quality, not for heat. Okay. And then uh, let's the, the smoked cherry chipotle. Now I just noticed something. Uh, these little sample jars I'm tasting out of the honey habanero says hot and the smoked cherry chipotle says hot. Am I going to suffer with this one too? No, it's not nearly as hot. Oh. I put that on there just for the people who are wimps. <laughs> Oh, they're like me. Thank you so For much. For the heat whims. <laughs> okay. And those two do get hotter when you cook them, obviously, because the capsaicin gets released by the seeds and the heat. <coughs> really nice smoky back, you know, back mm-hmm. flavor in this smoked cherry chipotle. That comes from the chipotle. I love it. Well, that also comes from the cherries because the cherries are smoked. Cherries, and you smoke those too. I smoke the cherries. <laughs> Roll them up in little papers and smoke them. And these are real cherries. Yeah, they're you're, real, you're real not, pie cherries. So you're not using like a cherry flavor or a nope. jelly gel nope. or some cherry liquids, whatever. It's real cherries. Real cherries. Okay, so, so far I've had, what, three of your barbecue sauces and... um. 
Uh, they're chunky. Yes, they are. Talk to me about that. I don't believe in a smooth sauce. Yes, I'm culinary trained, and we're taught to make our sauces smooth and silky. I want chunks of garlic. I want chunks of onion. I want chunks of texture. I want to be able to taste it because I think it loses its flavor, uh, some, some of its flavor and body when you take that, the texture out. Okay. And, uh, you know, even the tangy barbecue sauce had, it was chunky. Yes. And it worked. It was good. Okay. Yes. My mouth is finally calming down. Thank goodness for this beer. Um, okay, Marion Berry barbecue sauce. I'll taste it. You tell us about it. So Marion Berries are basically a hybrid blackberry out of Marion County, Oregon, where I live. And they're a little bit longer, um, similar to a boysenberry, but... They're, they're like a blackberry, just they're, better. But better. They're, <laughs> they're a little bit uh, sweeter. They're a little bit darker. And, and you, they are full of flavor. And you use real Marion berries in I start part. with whole Marion berries. Wow, this is really good. It's like a really good, got a little bit of sweetness to it, but not too much. It, one of the things I aim for with each and every one of my sauces is to make sure that there is a balance between vinegar, tomato, flavor, and sweet. You nailed it. Okay, so now the one that you put on the sliders for me, that is the roasted garlic sweet molasses barbecue sauce. I love me some garlic. How, that, how garlicky is this? It's pretty garlicky. That is my answer to Sweet Baby Ray's, because when I would do events, people would always say, you don't have anything like Sweet Baby Ray's. We love Sweet Baby Ray's, who, by the way, is a very nice man I got to meet last month. Um, you had, I watched you on social media. You had a blast there. Now, where were you at? I was at Fort Worth, Texas at the National Barbecue Association con uh, convention. You met lots of cool people. You ate lots of good food. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was, I, yeah, it, it, it is, was a vegetarian's nightmare. <laughs> okay, and uh, how, how garlicky is this for those that wonder? It's pretty garlicky. Um, it starts with a whole, whole garlic that we oven roast and then uh, grind up and put in the sauce with some sweet molasses. Um, it's actually really good even on just cornbread. So if, if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, um, my sauces are, except for the honey habanero and the jalapeno agave, um, they are vegan. They are gluten-free. So you can just, uh, yeah, I know. And you can put them on vegetables. I've done, I've done portobello steaks with the uh, roasted garlic sweet molasses before. Oh, that would be good. I could do a lot of different vegetables with the marionberry. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And on salmon, it's... To die for. But sticking to the vegan, the Marion Berry barbecue sauce is salmon. Yeah. I mean, a salmon is vegan. Yes. So you can just put it on vegetables? Yep. Oh, my gosh. I have some friends. They're kind of nutty, but I love them. And they have savory oatmeal for breakfast. Mm-hmm. So they'll put, like, savory stuff. They could put the Marion Berry barbecue sauce on their oatmeal. Yes. And still have vegan. Absolutely. Oh, that's fantastic. I love it. Okay, so if someone's a, a barbecue nerd, they know their barbecue sauce, they love it, they actually know what rubs are, what, what are the ones that you're going to recommend they try? Oh, I always recommend the tangy mustard because it's my most, like I said, it's my most award-winning sauce, and it is just, it's one of my favorites okay, that and, I created. And uh, that's a South Carolina style, mm -hmm. and some people like a, uh, a mustard barbecue, some people don't. Right. So for those that do, they would get the tangy mustard, and for the barbecue nerds that, eh, they don't want mustard, what's the other one they should get? Um, I always recommend the Marionberry after that, uh, just because it's a very north, it's a very northwest thing. Um... It's, you know, like I said, it, it berries were from right here in the Northwest, so it gives them a true appreciation for what's here in the Northwest. If they like it spicy, I always recommend the honey habanero. Which is really spicy. I mean, we're not, we're not I kidding. don't consider it really spicy, but for people who aren't used to spice, yeah, it's no, spicy. No, it's, it's really spicy. Trust me, my mouth is still on fire. It, don't <laughs> listen to her. The honey habanero is really spicy. <laughs> yeah, but... You, you know, green chilies you think are spicy, and they're not. I don't think green chilies. I love some green chili salsa. <laughs> so, hey, I can handle Stella Tacos triple X sauce. I do good with that these days. So this is, like, hotter than that. Come on now. <laughs> but it's delicious. Okay. I make hot wings with it, so. Okay, so um, I'm going to get some chicken, and uh, I'm going to throw it in the oven. Uh, how am I going to use your barbecue sauces? So I just throw it on the, throw it on the meat and throw it on the grill? Um, no. If no. you are over a direct flame... So if you have got a Weber grill and you've got charcoal underneath of you, the sauces are for finishing. Because of the sugar in it, it will make them burn. Gotcha. Okay. So in the oven, it's fine because you've got indirect heating. So if I'm going to put some chicken in the oven, then yes. I'm okay putting any of your sauces on it? Absolutely. Otherwise, cook the chicken on the grill. Last, what, 10 minutes, 2 minutes? Yeah. 
last t 10 to 5 minutes, put the sauce on it, get a nice char, and then pull it off. Yes. Okay? That's good, because not everybody, you know, the, now the barbecue nerds are like, I know that. But normal people, right. they don't know that. They don't realize. Like, yeah, right. just the last 10 minutes. Yeah. How about if, I, if I'm using a pan? If I'm cooking something, you know, burgers in a pan in the kitchen, I can put it on because it's not direct heat. It's not right on an open flame. Correct. Okay. Otherwise, open flame out at the beach on a barbecue at Beverly Beach. Yep. Outside of Lincoln City. Then I just finish a finishing sauce. Yes. I like that. Yeah. This is fantastic. Okay. I uh, so rubs are always designed for the beginning of the cook, beginning of the cooking process. Yep. And sauces are at the end of the cooking process. Okay. This is fantastic. Well, Tina, I'm so proud of you. I, I've been cheering you on for a number of years now, and I've watched your company grow, and you do a magnificent job. You're an amazing chef, and you're an incredible businesswoman. And so, so glad we got to tell your story on the Portland Culinary Podcast. I've got my bottle of honey habanero to take home to uh, <laughs> Diana Prince when I see her this weekend, because she will absolutely slaughter me if I don't bring her more, because she absolutely loves it. Um, I just wish you all the best continued success. And uh, once you're rich and famous, and your stuff is all across the country, will you please come back on the podcast and tell us about that part of your journey anytime <laughs> all right thank you so much cheers mm -hmm.